Step 3. Recursion in quantum networks. Let's think about the question, why would we want to use recursion in quantum networks? There's going to be two reasons. And the first reason we already hinted at in the previous steps. So classical internet has evolved over a long time. Initially, it started as a nice and simple picture, but there was need for new functionality that led to new protocols at different layers of the protocol stack. So this clean picture in the TCP IP model of four layers for application, transport, internet, and network access looks more or less something like this. It's not so neat anymore, where all these wedges represent new protocols that don't quite fit neatly into one of these networks. So if we could start all over again, how would we design the internet now? This is in fact what's going to happen with the quantum internet. It doesn't exist yet. We're only thinking about designing it. So this is the perfect, perfect uh, time to think about better design, more uniform design for quantum internet works. The desirable features, the arbitrary layering, multi-hub forwarding, embedded topologies, and also we have to think about privacy and security. All of these are covered by the recursive network architecture in a clean and unified framework. So, there is no need to reinvent the wheel. If a solution already exists, even though it's a classical solution, we can just take it and adopt it where appropriate to quantum networks. This is the reason number one. Let's talk about the second reason. And that's it, that quantum repeater networks already have recursion built in. What we do in quantum repeater networks is we take two or more mixed states, represented here by rho, and we perform some operations on them. And these operations result in new mixed states, let's say rho tildes. We take these rho tildes again, two or more copies, perform some operations, and we get new mixed states, rho primes. So these rho tildes could be anything. They could be states of increased fidelity in the case of purification, where we take two or more mixed states to produce a single mixed state of higher fidelity. They could represent encoded states in the case of error correction, which we talked about when we are talking about the second generation, the third generation of quantum repeaters. Or they could just refer to physical bell pairs, but this time shared between more distant nodes, which is the case for entanglement swapping. Let's stick with the example of entanglement swapping. Over here, we're starting with five link level bell pairs. And we perform entanglement swapping at these intermediate nodes. These two over here, and entanglement swapping over there. What we do is we produce a bell pair again, but this time shared between these two green end nodes and between these two blue end nodes. They are colored in different color because they could represent different networks. The green one represents network one and the blue one represents network two. So now we are sharing long distance bell pairs within a network. What we can do is we can uh, perform entanglement swapping again, but at this node over here that's shared the border of or at the boundary of network one and network two, and we produce end to end entanglement that's now connecting two different networks. We see recursion in action. Now, traditionally, there are two types of connections. There's the boundary to boundary connection, which is used for transit, and then there is also boundary to edge which is used for termination of a connection. In the quantum recursive network architecture, these are the same thing, but at different levels of the network. How that works is illustrated in this picture. Let's say that we have the following network at layer K. And we wish to establish end-to-end -end entanglement between uh, node end one and node end two. We have to utilize router one and router two along the path. Here we are abstracting away any sort of BSA or repeater nodes that might be positioned between end one, router one, or router one, router two, or router two and end node two. But as we said, at this layer, router one appears as a single network along the path. But in fact, at a lower layer, at layer K minus one, it could be an entire network on its own. 
So then the router one needs to know that it has to establish a boundary to boundary entangled connection between these network nodes. So how do we route in quantum recursive networks? How do we find the correct path? In classical internet has two layer routing which we mentioned before, the interior gateway protocols and the exterior gateway protocols. In the quantum recursive network architecture, routing is generalized and extended and it is required at every layer. The suitable metric that can be used to determine which route is more appropriate to pick over a different one is given by the following link characterization in terms of seconds that are needed to establish a bell pair at a given fidelity. This particular metric is used by the quantum Dijkstra algorithm. So if we return to our example of entanglement swapping, we have the following scenario. Each of these link level entanglements have different costs, C1, C2, C3, C4, C5. They are different purely because there could be either longer length uh, links or the hardware could be heterogeneous. As we move one layer higher, the cost of the following connection between the end nodes in network one is given as a function of the lower layer costs. It's a function of C1, C2 and C3 resulting in some cost C prime. Similarly for network two, we can use this um, link costs C4 and C5 to compute the new link cost C double prime, which is given by some function G. And it's a function of C4 and C5. And then again, as we perform entanglement swapping over here, we are interested, well, what's the associate cost between this end-to-end -end connection between network one and network two. And the final cost is given as a function H of C prime and C double prime. This is the basic idea behind using recursion in quantum networks. We still haven't touched on how rule sets fit into this architecture, which we are going to do in the next step.